You mean you like thinking it through? Yeah, I like thinking about, okay, what are my options? Why am I choosing this over this? Oh, that's literally the opposite of me. I hate thinking. I just play fast <laughs> chess. <laughs> I like clicking things. <laughs> Um, how do you like when you look at this now like how do you make choices or what's going through your mind i don't think actually i i wish i was joking about when i say i don't think but i actually do not think um it's because i've played chess for so long all the moves just kind of come automatically like if i'm like try harding i'll think but it's like it's i tried explaining this to people but i think the way i think is very different from a lot of people it's like muscle memory for me even though chess isn't really like a muscle game it's just intuition. okay so but, but now for example you played c5 like how do you decide like is there do you have a list of like is there anything popping up or how do you choose for example oh. if you know like oh, oh there's I mean, two or three okay different so options? like for this opening right you already have your pawns in the center of the board um, and I'm playing on hypermodern opening, which means that I don't take direct control of the center. So at some point, I'm going to have to hit back in the center with either c5 or d5. Now, whether I play c5 or d5 is up to personal preference. Here, I just wanted to play c5 because I think it makes the position a little bit more complex. And mm -hmm. since from yesterday, when I played you, you played that close position style really, really well. Um, and I didn't like that at all. So, like, I'm very aggressive. I'm a very aggressive chess player. Which, for some reason, doesn't translate into poker. I don't know why. But I, I, I hate defending. Like, I absolutely hate defending. Um, so basically, like, this leaves my bishop on b7 open, which is why I play c5. And I don't play d5, so I don't close off my bishop. Mm -hmm. But, like, these are all things I don't think about actively until somebody asks me why I play the moves I do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when you think about options now, like... Mm -hmm do you so how do these different options now pop to your mind or or how does that work for you okay so now i took your pawn on d4 i mean de depending on how you take i'm going to make my next choice because this is one of those pr positions when pawn structures so in in like queen pawn and uh, queen pawn openings right pawn structures are really important because those dictate the game in king pawn openings pawn structures also dictate the game but not as much in queen pawn openings um, so when you play a move like d4, I'm already thinking about like what structure I want to play in the future. So right now, um, actually, I'll let you make your move. I don't want to influence your next move. Yeah, for me, so for example, when I think about it now, I'm like, okay, I, I don't know entirely, for example, in a spot like this, whether I would prefer pawn or, or knight. So, so queen for me is out mm -hmm. because I... I don't want you to develop um, your knight on c6 with tempo. I just don't feel like it's achieving as much. Mm -hmm. um, whereas, like, between pawn and knight, what I don't like about... Um, normally, I would take with the knight. What I don't like about it is that it kind of blocks my... my... Um, bishop on f1. Mm -hmm. mm. Wait, your bishop on f1? If you take yeah, with because the it has to defend g2. Oh, I see what you mean. Oh, okay, okay. So it's not like blocking literally. But yeah, I understand what you mean now. Yeah, that makes total sense. So I can't castle. Mm -hmm. Like that That part, that's the only reason why I would probably take with the pawn. Yeah, that totally makes sense. Um, I would say both are actually playable. But based on what you said, of course, like taking with the pawn, um, you can develop your bishop next move and then you can castle faster if you take with the knight then you probably have to spend another move to defend your pawn or something like that but you keep the you would have kept the default open and then you could have potentially gone for the d square and all of that stuff so i think it's just like a lot of chess kind of comes down to personal preference as well mm -hmm. um like in well okay i guess not really for poker but uh it, it does kind of depend on your style of play but i think e takes d4 is probably the more solid way to go Yeah, dude, he's a lot better than me. He's a lot better at chess than I am. Wait. He's a lot better in chess relative to my strength in poker. God damn, English is a hard language. I need to stop speaking Polish because I swear I just can't speak anymore.
Control gameplay works in chess. Yes, it does. That's the kind of style I have. Like, I mean, I'm aggressive, but also like... <laughs> I mean, he's not a thousand. He's like way higher than a thousand. <laughs> Polish is easier. It's not. <laughs> no Polish today, guys. Um... Did you mute yourself? Sorry? Did you mute yourself? Yeah, I just muted myself. I was just saying that... I don't want to disturb your thinking. I, I was just saying that, like, your skill in chess is a lot higher than my skill in poker. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't worry about uh, disrupting me. I, I can think why you... So, he, yeah. Um, I don't know if this is... I don't know if this is smart thinking, but I... I, I think you're gonna play a really good move next move. Yeah. Okay, what the heck? You're like 1500, like 1600 or something in chess, I swear. Like, this is it not probably, balanced. It probably would have been better to play queen a4, right? Um, queen a4, yes, it would probably have been better. Because queen a4, then you would have also gotten the check in on a3. Yeah. Okay, I need to remember this for next time because I keep underestimating you and I'm like stuck in these really terrible positions. Dude, he's 1800? He's beating me in chess. Why is he beating me in chess? Like what? Okay, to be fair, I beat him in head I, I beat him in um all in or whatever that poker is. So fold or all in. Yeah, yeah. I can say I beat him in poker too, it's fine. <laughs> the door is just built different. <laughs> I beat him in all in a bowl, exactly. <laughs> He's bluffing re race. <laughs> I'm gonna get chess lessons from him for real. <laughs> I'm just playing the bomb cloud here, guys. Ignore me. I don't know if you know the name for like having a king on E7 or E2. It's like a. No. So it's called the bomb cloud. It's oh yeah, I see. Yeah, that, yeah, it's it's not. It's a very meme thing, but people take it seriously now. Okay, wait. I have to save my position. This sucks. No, we get do talked if you guys behave for the rest of the day. Ah, God, I'm very funny, Madison. Very funny. All social media is NA true. We are living in a... Why do I reply to meme questions, not good ones? I'll reply to good ones too. What do you want to ask me, buddy? <laughs> I'm not... <laughs> Link to Fedora's stream. You can check out his Twitter. Um, he streams on two things, he told me. So he streams on Poker Code Official and also Real Crown Up Guy. I was gonna find it, but uh, wait, he's kind of super family. Yo, thank you, thank you, bets. Man, why am I losing? What the fuck, bro? Like, I genuinely don't understand. I feel like it's kind of tricky to come up with moves here. Yeah. yeah, so this is the point where lower rated players are gonna start making mistakes because they don't really know what to do, right? Or they will spend all their time. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the number one trick to not doing that is in a position where you feel like you can't do anything, your opponent... Okay, first of all, in this position, who do you think has an advantage? Oh, I think I have a clear advantage. Yeah, you have a very clear advantage. Okay, so do you think I am having an easy time with making moves? Mm, no, it's more like... the the. So let's say the issue I come into is... So I, I see moves... And then the counter move for you is really obvious, and that's why I don't wanna want to make the move. So let's say I, I see c4. Mm -hmm. Okay, so c4 is a move for me. Yeah. But bishop b4 seems like a really strong move against that. Okay, but then what can you play after? Mm. I mean I need to move my rook, probably rook b1 or 
Rook e2. And I don't really like it. Then you take then you take with rook on d4. Like it I, I don't like c4. So I'm okay. dismissing that. So I'm just gonna do something else. Sure. Um, but I don't know what. <laughs> Okay, so I'm actually gonna say c4 is not a bad move because if I go bishop before, what can you play? You don't. Mm. You said a. You said two rook moves, but you're missing like one. I'm missing like one. Okay. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh, rook d1. Yeah, okay. exactly. And you're defending your d4 pawn, right? Mm -hmm. Makes sense, yeah. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So sometimes, um, like, see, when you have an advantage, I like to I like to say this thing called luck favors the better player kind of thing in chess. Mm -hmm. Um, it's basically just like you know you have the advantage, right? And your position is good so therefore that makes that means my position must be bad it's just like in these situations you very likely have a way to just keep improving the position um mm -hmm. and you just have to like kind of look further perhaps uh when you want to make a move like c4 and just think about hey look you looked at the two rook moves to e2 b1 but there was also just rook d1 right you just need a little bit of a like hint for that mm -hmm. yeah I'm still not, I don't know, I just felt like there's a feeling inside me where I know there's a better move. No, I think c4 is the best move. No, but in the position before as well, oh. like when I, when I played, like how I played it out. I don't know. It just feels okay. like there's a better... So this is the number one thing you might need to let go of, because I know that games online aren't timeless right like like you have yeah. to you will run out of time but the thing is the evaluation between the move you want to play versus the positional best move is probably like only a difference in evaluation of like 0.5 or something like it, it, yeah. it will be really low so you're not but missing out at all by playing a little bit faster and by making a move that is not optimal yeah, I think I'm somewhere stuck between I don't mind so much, like I'm not trying to grind up ratings, so I kind of like the challenge mm -hmm. of, just, you know, trying to find the best move, kind of. Yeah. Um, I understand and, that. Um, but and me timing is, out. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I'm like, the reason, okay, the only way I play chess is by timing people out. Like, that's how I play chess. Uh, it's just I know, like, I watch the streams. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the only thing I like to do. So we have very different playing styles, I think, when it comes to chess. <laughs> and you're making me, like, sit down and think about my moves, and it's not going well <laughs> for me. So I need to um focus. He already knows. He already knows. This is over for me, guys. <laughs> yeah, playing slow is very good for learning. No, Fedora's gonna coach me in chess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, he's absolutely crushing me. What the hell? All right, after this, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Full try hard. Okay. I should just stop giving uh, him time. So I see d5, I see rook c6. <laughs> oh yeah, I keep losing his legs too. <laughs> I crush him in go. No, I can't probably. My chat was making a joke where they said that if I go full try hard, I'll just stop giving you more time. And honestly, that's probably the angle. Yeah, you you can. Let's do it like this. You you leave me the three minutes now, and then I have some. Okay, I'll leave you the three minutes. No, but like the thing is, if I just give you more time, you'll beat me. Like, I kind of wanna. I kind of want that to happen because it's like it's just. I don't know. It, it's pretty shocking. <laughs> For sure, UFO. I agree with you. Play lower rated opponents, playing um, very aggressive openings is a very good choice. But the thing is, my playstyle is adjusted to 
optimize my play, right? It's like same thing for poker. Just because, like what Fedor said, Fedor, I keep mispronouncing his name, I'm sorry. Um, like when you play, you should not be worrying too much about like your opponent's elo. You should be worrying about if you're playing your best game or not. We have a Polish moderator. We have two Polish moderators. So for me, I always play optimally. And I always play optimally. Or well, at least I try to play optimally. No, well, who am I like? Who am I lying to? I fucking just flag people. That's all I do. I just flag. Never mind. <laughs> I don't play optimally at all. No, I'm Polish. Levis is not here. Probably, yeah. <laughs> How to say? You should worry about it only once you get better. Yeah, once you get... Like, don't worry about your opponent's strength, like, ever. Yeah, dude, I fucking inted. I fucking ran it down. Do you see an invite for this board? Okay, now, there we go. Alright, perfect. Mm -hmm. So you should be able to see every single move I make. Yeah. Um, alright. So basically, what you did was really good. I should have probably just played b5 honestly c5 was a bit of a mistake um yeah so here d5 i shouldn't have done because that gives you that chance i'm just like i didn't i wasn't really expecting you i keep underestimating you this is my biggest mistake i keep underestimating you. you're like miles ahead of anybody i've ever coached and like i'm just like <laughs> whoa <laughs> whoa okay but now now i know now i know um okay so in this position yeah bishop takes b8 this was really good I do think, oh, queen a4, bishop b5, they're about the same. So what you did was actually best, play king e7 here. Um, okay, f6, queen c6, takes, takes. Yeah, all right, so you played like this part of it really well. Just let, let me know when you like started having mm -hmm. um, trouble with like deciding what to play. Yeah, I mean, queen a4 seemed to be already a mistake, right? Um, okay, so the reason queen a4 is a mistake is because I could play rook c8 here. But it's yeah. not, like, a huge deal, because the idea is that I'll take here, and then you can take here. So, it, it's just... So, queen a4, I don't think is a bad move. It's just more accurate to just retreat your bishop. I it, don't think I can take, right? Wait, queen takes c7? Queen takes a7? Yeah. Wait, why not? Uh. I mean, oh. I'm in oh, check. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, okay. I'm, yeah, okay. Yeah, but the, the reason this isn't that good is because we, I will tr try to trade off queens going to end game. And you pretty much are forced to take here. So, once again, like, if I have a king in the center of the board, right, it's not a big deal if it's already an end game because there's nothing to attack it. Mm -hmm. So. Basically, um, the reason queen a4 was not good is because of this rook c8 move. And you can't take on a7 because I can play rook to c7. And then I can take your bishop next move. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's the only reason why queen a4 was bad. But it was like a purely tactical thing. And I didn't play the best move. I played a5, obviously. So uh, here, your position is super solid. And you did really well going for another weakness. This was good stuff. You're completely winning here. Yeah, you defended that well. Um, here, I would probably... It's probably better practice to play h3, because g3 just... Like, h3 tends to not give you a single weakness on the king side, right? Mm -hmm. But if you play g3, I know I don't have a light squared bishop right now, so it's not such a big deal, but g3 still gives you the chance of being attacked on the light squares. Mm -hmm. Both moves are fine in this position specifically, but this is something I want to you I want you to keep in mind. Mm -hmm. So g3, rook b8, queen d5, queen maybe d5. Mm -hmm. Maybe even h4 over h3 to start with h5 and opening up your king side. Yeah, h4 h4 works too. Exactly. That's a really good thought as well. So you can play a queen here and then maybe push h5. Or you can just push h5 because then you just weaken my king structure. So yeah. h4 would have also been really good. 
Yeah, also with d5, like, opens the fourth row and... Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's just so many chances to attack my king, right? Mm -hmm. Can go queen g4, mm -hmm. h5 as well. Yeah. It's a very good observation. Um, rook b8, queen b5 here. Okay. I definitely didn't play this part very well. Um... Okay, so this is a tactical thing, but here I could have just taken on c3. What would you have done? Mm. I take... Wait, uh, I think I take b6. Okay. All right, I mean, this is fine, um, but... That's better? Do you think this position is... Okay, no, what, like, this is the continuation you played is, like, perfect, right? But do you think this position is better or worse than um, this position? Like, this position? Like, comparing oh, these I don't two like, positions? Oh, I don't like this move. Like, I, I think... Oh, you don't Bishop like Bishop A4? A4. It's just not that good, I think. That's what I... But I mentioned it in that oh, position right. that I... Okay, okay, I understand now. I understand now. Okay. I'm sorry. This was the spot... This was the spot mm -hmm. where Bishop is on b3. That was the spot when I felt like... I have so many options and I right. cannot really figure out... Like, fast enough what the best follow-up is, basically. Okay. So here, um, you should definitely just put the focus on defending your c3 pawn. Mm -hmm. Because, so, sorry, I, I wasn't quite understanding during the game. But if you play bishop a4 when I play queen takes c3, queen takes b6, queen b4, there, this position is um, not as good as this position because, first of all, you only have that one pass pawn in the middle of the board, right? And, mm -hmm. okay, so first of all, for everybody, this, this tactics doesn't really work. We just take and rook endgames are generally drawn even if you're up a pawn mm -hmm. so chances are this position is a drawn but in this position right there's still so many pieces on the board you still have this pass pawn having more pieces on the board in this situation because it's a major piece end game is going to help you um push the pawn up so in this position you should already be thinking about since it's an end game well it's co going into end game it's still like more or less a middle game but going into the end game you need to start deciding what piece combinations can I use to win the game? I, I think I see right now, like a thought that I didn't have at all in game was um, that. So basically my thought process was, I see that um, C3 is under attack. So I'm thinking, okay, either I defend it or mm -hmm. I create some counter pressure basically. Right. And I wanted to, that's why I was thinking, okay, I couldn't really think of a great way to defend it, but I think that was what I'm now realizing I can just play rook e3 or mm -hmm. rook c1. Yeah, rook, I think rook, rook e3 is slightly better. Mm -hmm. um, and in game, my thought was more, I was more focused on c4 or, or some counter activity, and that I thought was bishop a4. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bind your queen to not take c3, but um, it, it, seems like it's not as good as i thought it would be right so wait why did you think you need counterplay here though um because i didn't like c4 okay so the word counterplay is usually so right now you're at an advantage so counterplay is only when you're like at a disadvantage which you need to do counterplay right when you okay, have so the I, advantage I already the you don't putting... yeah Sorry. So yeah, so when you have an advantage, you can put more pressure on your opponent. That's definitely a way to do it. The other way you can do it is just by choking your opponent out. Mm -hmm. I, I just thought it's a... Um, what I mean by counter pressure... Uh, counter... Um, what did I say? Counter pressure? Mm, yeah, uh, counterplay. 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 Yeah, I just, fi I just meant... If I cannot defend c3, then I want to make it difficult for you to right. take... Oh, okay. That, that makes total sense. Of course. Okay, yeah, I get that part. Mm -hmm. So it's just in this position you could have played rook to e3. 
in order to defend the bomb. But I, I just assume you, you probably just didn't see the move. Yeah, in the moment, it's interesting how now, looking at it, it seems really obvious, but in mm -hmm. the moment, I didn't really consider it. Yeah. I mean, for I like, later, too, right? Um, and once again, for Bishop A4, I think somebody said Queen takes D7. Is this a, is this a possible move? Yeah, but you... Like, this... This, this is, like, going to become a draw, because um, Queen versus two Rooks is supposed to be equal, but I have a Queen and a Bishop still. Right, so there's still combinations that are possible. So yeah, that's kind of the reason why that's not so good. But I mean, I obviously didn't take the pawn, so I made a huge mistake here by playing rook to f7. And here was the part where you were like debating again on playing c4. Mm -hmm. What was the thought process behind why you were so hesitant to play c4? Um, that is why I took so long is because I couldn't really explain why. It just didn't feel like such a great move. Okay. I just, I just feel like, so it's kind of closing the diagonal. Um, mm -hmm. it opened, I really like that your bishop is pretty scuffed and cannot yeah. really move. Useless on d6, yeah. Um, I like that square c4 open for my queen to move as well. Mm-hmm reroute to like d3 e2 or the in the fifth like just generally being able to be more flexible mm -hmm. um yeah i don't know i just it just felt like i have something better i cannot even explain why yeah why no is. i mean i think i understand what you're thinking about so a move like c4 you feel like is letting my bishop get a little bit more active you're limiting your queen's your queen's boss too right so you obviously know your c3 pawn here is a weakness. You could have also played like the move that we were discussing on the previous move. Instead of playing bishop a4, you could have played rook to e3. Mm -hmm. And yeah, this is something that, you know, to defend, I mean, to defend a pawn, right? You, you can just move a piece to defend it. Uh, you already know that. But I think it was still the same issue. You just didn't see rook e3. Yeah, it. I don't know. It just seemed like something that I. I think I should consider that more. Whereas, it intuitively feels um, like not the first move I'm thinking of, but I cannot actually say why that is. Mm hmm. Yeah, I think I think you just like have intuition. Like you just know. You just know. We'll just leave it at that. I believe you. <laughs> I trust you. Yeah, a lot of the, I don't know, when I see chess, a lot of the things I cannot actually really explain you why, it's just a move feels a certain way or not. Well, that's perfect, you know? that That's that's actually the correct way to play chess. You just have a feel for it, that's perfect. Um. So yeah, c4 was, I guess it's not bad. Like, this is one of the parts where I say, if you're going to end up spending, like in a classical game, for example, when I have 90 minutes plus 30 seconds per move, if I'm going to spend 30 minutes debating between c4 and rook e3, it's not worth it, right? Same mm -hmm. thing applies. I mean, you don't really care right now because you're just trying to focus on um, playing good moves, but that, that totally is fair. But in tournaments and stuff, if I, had to, if I had to spend 30 minutes debating between c4 and rook e3, so the computer evaluation is like a 0 0.2, 0 0.3 difference. The reason I said C4... I don't, know, I don't know that in the game, right? Like, yeah, I you actually... don't know that in the game. But but you can kind of guess. You can kind of evaluate it. Like, the difference in the position of the field between C having, playing C4 versus Rook E3, it can't be that big. Because, logically speaking, this doesn't really give Black anything. I mean, sure, it lets my Bishop get to B4, but then you get your Rook to D4, and then you're supporting your Pass Pawn. If you play Rook E3, what's, ha what's going on is, okay, this is... I mean, this pawn is still defended, right? You still have the pass pawn. You can go support your pass pawn next move. No issue at all whatsoever. This bishop is still really bad. So you just consider like the advantages and disadvantages. And then you're like, it's still roughly the same. So then you're like, either move is going to be fine. Yeah, I like rook e3 much more. If I would have seen it in game, I think that would have been the, the one I would have played. The one you would have played? Okay, yeah, that's totally fair. Um, but you can kind of see like, I think you're a little bit harsh on yourself in terms of like trying to make the perfect move. Perfect moves in chess is impossible. Like nobody does that. Not even like Magnus Carlsen. Like he doesn't make perfect moves. Nobody makes perfect moves. Um, 
just because like there are just so many choices right? like he can't make perfect move for the whole game so you just have to be a little bit more lenient and accept the fact that this is just not one of those positions this is not like the crucial crucial turning point of the game right like whether or not you play rookie 3 or whether or not you play c4 is not going to decide the outcome of the game because both moves are still really really frustrating to play against as black mm -hmm. so yeah that's why i think c4 is totally fine um bishop b4 rook d1 i think there's a much better move here by the way yeah i missed that in game but i think rook e6, uh, c6 that's actually a reason why i i think um, that's a big upside. I didn't calculate that far in front. I saw it afterwards, but like mm -hmm. um, Rook C6, I think is really good here. Yeah, Rook C6 is really good here. Um, this forces my queen to go to somewhere super awkward. And after that, you don't even have to put your fork on D1. You can put it onto E4. And then you still have control over this open file. Yeah, that looks like a good position. Yeah, I mean, this position is so good for you. You're completely like choking out my game. So here, I mean, rookie four is still fine, but I can play f5 and this puts your rook somewhere awkward. Whereas if you play rook c6 and go queen a7, you play rookie four. If I play f f5 now, um, you can just go queen e5 check. Yeah. And then my king is going to be really, really difficult to defend. Mm, okay, so here, here, yeah, rook takes b6, you're completely winning. Man, each game you play against me, you're just completely winning. I feel like it's time for you to coach me. <laughs> this is a reverse coach angle, honestly. <laughs> okay, so, I mean, obviously you're still winning throughout all this, right? Um, here, definitely, like what I said about the rook, inting the rook is not accurate, because you get the rook back. But, but, you're easing up the pressure you have on me. Because think about this way. I have, what, four pieces? Okay, they're all kind of scuffed, scuffed, right? Like, they're not in very good positions. Um, this rook wants to go do something on this open file, but now there's a queen in front of it. This rook has done absolutely nothing the last 10 moves. So this is not a position in which you want to swap off your the pieces because this rook is so much more active. We have a name for this in poker. We call it fancy play syndrome. Oh, fancy play syndrome? Oh, really? <laughs> so, like, you give your opponent a chance because you just want to flex on them? No, no, no. It's when you're looking for, uh, like, you know, good-looking moves where it would just be easier to play straightforward moves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Like, I, I'm thinking it's just so simple. I, I looked at rook c6, and I don't know why I didn't play it. I was just like... <laughs> yeah, I mean, rook c6 is a really good move. Even stronger might be just, you know, I see five actually works here for some reason. Okay, this is something I didn't even think about. I'm just like looking at the valuation now. Holy, your position is so crushing. Okay, c5 is a move I would not have expected you to find. I would not have found that myself, honestly. But yeah, rook c6 is simple enough, right? You hold everything, um, you're starting to play c5. Like, I'm realistically out of moves. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I think this was like one of your, this is like a big mistake. Not that you are like losing after this, but the moment I start to get a bit of an attack on you, uh, and also the fact that your time started going low, right? Yeah. You just started like making inaccurate moves. Here you could still have gone for a draw. After here, uh, just go queen h3. Here, it's a perpetual. Because I just yeah, yeah, I saw that. Mm. I I was going for uh, the Go humiliation. Going for the win. I like it. I like it. I respect <laughs> that a lot. <laughs> so yeah, no, I, I mean... didn't. I didn't want to embarrass you in front of your stream, so I decided to to blunder it. To away. blunder and lose. Okay. Well, thank you very much. You know, um, <laughs> I told my chat that if I lose, they can all follow me. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait, you want to play one where I actually just go full try? I'm going to go full try. I can't, I can't. Okay, but we, do, we do five minutes plus five, okay? Five plus then, five? Okay. Then I, it's somewhere in the middle and I have some... I can think, but... Okay, sounds good. Let's go. Um, Wait, I'll start the game. Here, I'll take white pieces. I've only seen... But it's interesting uh, when I... 
when I play chess that my spread between my moves is pretty high. It's like I, I think for some reason I have sometimes I have it easy to find mm -hmm. moves that seem difficult, but like I sometimes make also pretty bad moves. This is very positional dependent. I don't think people realize this enough, but it might just be because you haven't practiced a certain position enough. Or you haven't seen that position this many times before. I, I, yeah. I'm a, I one trick a sing singular opening. So I know positions are rising from that opening really well, right? Because the way you start in chess, if you start out with a specific opening, I'm sure you already know this. I don't even know why I'm explaining it to you. Um, but like the, the middle game part is going to be a result of the opening. And it's going to be something you've seen before. But if you go into a completely new opening, then of course you're going to be confused, right? So part of it for mm. you, I think, might just be being not necessarily as familiar with certain positions. Now, if I coach you like more times as like a coach, I can obviously pick up the patterns and I can just like literally give you puzzles and stuff to help you solve those specific positions where you struggle a little bit. Mm -hmm. Wait, here. All right. Start the game. All right, good luck. Good luck. I'm going to focus. Wow, one zero. <laughs> wow, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm totally zoned out right now. But uh, let's see. Wait, what? I, I don't know. Uh... You're doing fine. You're doing fine. You're doing absolutely fine. Yeah, I just... Uh... Okay. I actually need to think here. He's better than Kozok, yeah. I mean, bullet-wise, he won't be as good as Kozok, but play-wise... Play I'm not sure that's true, but let's see. <laughs> you're doing... I mean, I have to really think hard about against your moves, so... Uh, I should have played... Oh, I'm not... Mm. Tactics is really hard. When you get into these tactical positions against somebody who's stronger, you'll probably end up on the losing side of it. Yeah, that was... Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I just wanted to tell chat, people were like, why did I not take your pawn on h7? And I'm like, getting checkmated for a pawn is kind of not worth it. And what you did exactly was what I said, demonstrated, right? You went for a free pawn, and it was not worth it. Yeah, I was actually... I thought that I would get away. Uh-huh. What was the thought process? Wait, here, let me send you an analysis invite. Okay. I thought that I would get away with it. I mean, I tried to analyze it. Uh-huh. And... Uh, yeah. It's interesting. I I thought that it w would work, but I didn't see bishop g5. So I was just calculating and didn't see that move, and then mm -hmm. from there it was just... Yeah. Um, I mean, the opening was fine. Like, uh, there was no issue with the opening. I definitely... This is not one of the better openings I played, but... Yeah, bishop c5 was a blunder, apparently. Yeah, I could have played knight e4 immediately. Um, it gives, it gives me a tempo to play knight e4, and then you have to move your bishop. Wait, here, let me send you the invite again. So, you guys... You can see my arrow. Wait. Yeah, actually, I would I would rather uh, play another one because I think I, okay, I know sure. exactly. Okay, sure. No worries. All right. I mean, that game was like a little bit scuffed. I agree. All right, here. Let me play one as black again. No, but that was a good one. It's interesting because I think it shows exactly where, like, I think it started the moment I played Bishop C five, mm -hmm. which is just not a good move. I was more thinking like, ah, okay, you know, develop pieces and so on, but like you in that. Yeah, I mean, Queen G4, I just started attacking you too, right? Like, it probably just wasn't... Yeah. Oh, you set your time. Okay, guys, here we go again. 
Okay, what about this? Yep, this is fine. <laughs> okay, I do not like this line actually for myself. We go again, let's see. We do. I mean, I feel like you're gonna pick up a draw one of these days against me. I'm working on it. <laughs> if time wasn't a thing, I think you'd honestly be winning. <laughs> Not sure. Not sure about that. Okay. You only saw Hikari play the Grand Prix? Take a one hour game and see if he wins. The thing is, I know even in a one hour game, guess what I'm gonna be doing? Why not bishop b7 here? How do you get a bishop to b7? I mean, I'll probably play the one hour game like it's bullet. <laughs> yeah, I'll keep playing half a second. You guys already know me. I'm not very really good at just sitting down and playing games. But I mean, if I actually focus and play one hour, I play pretty well. Yeah, give him an hour to give Neil 10 minutes. No, give me one minute, man. I just need a minute. <laughs> Lost with 58 seconds left, pretty much. It's my life story. Okay, should I go here? Now I'm gonna play this, because this is gonna get my bishop an uh, outpost in the middle of the board. No, I don't have a vacuum cleaner based on water. So when learning chess, better to go versus bots, just hop into live. Guys, playing bots in chess is like playing bots in League of Legends. Play like one to five games against bots. After that, never ever touch bots again. Don't touch bots, because bots are not helpful at all. Yeah, but like it's a good idea to play like a few games if you've never played before It's not a bad thing at all to just play a couple of games against the bots to kind of understand the rules of chess, right? And like how moves are made, but then after that just don't play bots ever Well, even Bethbot. Bethbot plays perfectly and they just think the way it's coded Is so that they make a random mistake at an RNG amount of time at an RNG certain time or amount of moves so it's not like a real human at all. Humans don't play perfectly and then all of a sudden make a huge mistake. They make little mistakes that amount to something a lot bigger. Like I won't play optimal moves for 50 moves straight and then blunder in one move. I will make a few here and there. Right? So it's just like the way that the bots are coded is not not good for you to play against. Does that kind of make sense? I mean, it depends on what level bot you play against. But... I mean, playing against like a really well emulated bot is a different story. Okay? But I've beaten Hikaru bot. They are not emulated to play perfectly like Hikaru. If you go play Stockfish 12, it will never make a mistake. But these bots, the way the bots are programmed, I don't want to get into a whole spiel about computer engines and stuff because I don't know enough about it to give you guys a lecture on it. But yeah, d just don't play bots unless like it's your first game in chess ever. Yeah, I guess we're doomed. Yeah, this is not looking too good for you. This is not looking too good. Mm -hmm.
I'm like debating how annoying do I want to make your life. <laughs> now that I actually have a chance to do it, and I heard that yeah, you want, I mean, you wanted to you, crush me the other you game. Take on, you take on G two, then you take on D two, and yes. then you yep. let me. <laughs> Good game. <laughs> I mean, but I really want to. This, this we can analyze. That's yeah, this see. one, this one was pretty good. Here, I'll invite you. Okay. Um, I feel like you know your openings really well. Um, mostly, yeah. I, Do you mostly, like study? Um, I started, I, I just, a couple of days ago, I got chess base and I just started, whenever I face something that I haven't seen before, I just look into the couple of variations there are. Mm -hmm. And that's been, that's been helping and I have a, I have a good memory, so. That's, that's pretty cool, yeah. Cool. I mean, you're doing something that I haven't done in like four years, so props to you, man, props to you. <laughs> you're taking this really seriously. <laughs> Um, okay, so the thing I said about e5, yeah, e5 is good here. Um, another idea that's very common in this opening is to potentially prepare to play f5 at some point. Because you already know I'm going to castle, right? So um, if you mm -hmm. like basically prepare f5, that's a way to open up my king's side. Mm -hmm. So that's just another idea, but e5 is really good. I feel like even the move before, like I, I feel that that is already um, not very precise that I should have played e5 before I take uh before you take where here oh like I feel e5 is much better here than be why do you think e5 is much better here um mm, because of your bishop on the diagonal mm -hmm. okay like when it is on c6 I I feel like it's just a weaker move or I, I feel like it gets worse. Oh, like I, I feel... understand what you mean. Yeah. So I mean, you're playing e5 in a situation when my bishop's already on this diagonal, right? Exactly. So you're basically yeah. like letting my bishop be strong. Whereas if you feel you feel like if you played e5 here, my bishop's not here. So that same thing cannot happen. Yeah. Okay. Here though, I can actually play a6. Um. So it's kind of gonna transpose unless you want to play like bishop a4, which I don't really like because. You just give me the entire center and I get like a bunch of pawn pushes for free, right? Mm -hmm. So e5 in this position is actually not that good. Because if, if I play, if, if if this happens, I mean, I can play, um, like I said, I can play a6 and you'll take and this will be back to that kind of scenario. I mean, sure, you might have saved the move, but you'll still face the same issues you did in the game we played. Mm -hmm. However, in this position, a really good idea is to play f5. Mm -hmm. I know. I think. Why? Why do you think playing f five would be good? Um, I mean, there's a couple of reasons. I open up my bishop. I um, break through on your king's side. Mm -hmm. um, I keep my center more intact. Like I, I like. Yeah. I like that. Um, I open the f file. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's lots of reasons why I like it. Exactly. So f5 is a very thematic move for... This, this opening is called the Closed Sicilian. I think this is... Is it the Grand Prix? I don't remember the name of it, but I'm sure you know better than me. But it's the Closed Sicilian. But anyways, a really common plan is to play f5, especially in a situation in which the king is like still in the middle of the board, right? Mm -hmm. If the king is still in the middle of the board, then you want to be opening up the center in order to attack my king. So in this position, if I just take, I mean, you know, my king is in the middle of the board, you can play something like bishop to f4, you can attack this pawn. Uh, even though you lose a pawn, I, I don't think you're somebody who cares a lot if they lose pawns. Correct me if I'm wrong, though. Just value. We're just looking for value. Yeah, you're just looking for value. Exactly, right? Like, if you're giving up a pawn, but you're getting more in return, then, you know, who cares about the pawn? So I like this mentality a lot. Uh, that's really good. I don't even need to explain to you why it's okay to sacrifice pieces then. So uh, here, basically f5, it's really good. I mean, you you do lose a pawn, but you get so much activity for it. My king's still in the middle of the board. You can attack this pawn. And basically, like, 
my next two moves need to be to get my king to safety, right? But I don't really have time to do that. So instead, I would not take on f5. I would just play something like knight g7. But you can still keep up the pressure by moving out your bishop and you're threatening to play moves like f6. Actually, I don't know if bishop to g5 is the best move here. Let me check if the open explorer has it. Okay, so it's bishop to c4. Um, okay, so you're basically just keeping up the pressure. And if I take here, you'll once again go bishop to f4 and then you basically be attacking the king. But f5 is a very thematic move here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so uh, I don't want to take that. But that's why in this position, f5 very specifically is better than e5. After what you did play, though, here, I still think f5 is better than e5. Um, like, I mean, with the ideas and stuff, I... Okay, here, it gets a little bit more difficult. Here, I would honestly not even push either of these pawns. The moment you push a pawn, that means you're committed. But you still have a lot of moves you can make before you have to commit to a plan, right? Like, you can still play queen e2, you can develop your bishop, you can bring your other rook over, and then you can kind of decide whether or not to push f5 or e5. So this is one of those positions where I know the engine might suggest um, to push e5 or something, but I think for a human, it makes a lot more sense to just wait and then decide whether or not to push e f5 or e5. Because mm -hmm. both palm breaks could totally work, but a bad pawn break is going to leave your pawn structure kind of doomed for the rest of the game because pawns can go backwards. So you don't want to commit super early. Yeah, it's interesting how I can see with this opening, like I played it maybe once before or twice. Mm -hmm. And I can see how a lot of these follow up situations just I feel I, I would need to go through all the variations once or twice. Mm -hmm. Because like all this, you know, like I, I feel I'm sitting there and I, I'm mentally going through like, okay, E5. And then I look at all the options you have and mm -hmm. I feel like I cannot really evaluate what is a good spot for it to do it. Yeah, for sure. Or why it would be much better. Like I, I, I can look at it and I see like, oh yeah, okay. That's kind of the position it would be in like in four moves or something, but I cannot really come up why it would be much better or much worse. Okay, I totally understand that. Yeah, I mean, for it, it, it just becomes, um, like I said, re recognizing patterns, right? The more you know, the more information you have, the better you'll be able to make a choice. There's, mm. there's no way to speedrun this other than play all these positions. When you run into trouble, you figure it out. Then you go play again, you'll probably get a different position. There's just so many different positions in chess. You can't memorize them all, but you start to understand. You start to build like an understanding of what to do in certain scenarios. For sure. Yeah. Um, so here, like, I actually didn't do very well with my 95 move. Apparently, engine doesn't like it. You could have played 94. And I definitely agree with this 94 move. Can you give me, like, reasons for why you think 94 would be good? Um, yeah, when I see it now, it's, it's super obvious. So, um, I mean, I think taking just kind of restores the situation that, that we had before, where you have a really strong bishop, um, lined up um, and I feel actually this kind of scuffed center is pretty good for me is like when I when I put my knight on e4 I I put pressure on d6 mm -hmm. uh, mainly um, there's a threat around f6 um, where I could potentially l line up stuff <laughs> later um, mm -hmm. there is potentially c4 yep. Like I just I just like that move much more than taking and removing both knights there. Yeah, for sure. So knight to e4 is really good here. Um because of those reasons you said you have this potential square, you're threatening to take here, you can kick my knight out. Exactly. You mean I mean you don't even need a coach for this. <laughs> you literally know exactly what's up. And this knight is like basically on an outpost too, right? So your knight's really strong. It's like being the doing the octopus thing. In the middle of the board. It actually, it actually feels like like I I for that reason I don't really think knight d5 is that good. Mm -hmm. Like I I just feel when you put it on g4 it's much more difficult for me to defend there. Yeah, for sure. I mean, okay, so a knight on g4, um, 
I, you can get kicked out pretty easily too. But yeah, I my knight's not doing much oh, yeah. on e4 right now for sure. And your knight's just so much better on e4. So like there's oh. very little, I mean, sorry, my knight's not doing much on d5. Um, your knight can just take this knight and then after bishop takes d5, you know, I get a really good bishop now, right? Yeah. So yeah, this is, um, that was definitely one of your bigger mistakes. It's like one of those positional mistakes. You're still not lost or anything like that. It's just all of these issues are really going to compound. And yeah. basically you just don't want them to compound. But maybe to, to go back because you said H, H3, I just feel like that will lead. So if you oh, go if like this. Oh, here? And now you get to F5 and it looks like a really strong um, bishop to me okay i actually agree with you i think uh, maybe knight g4 I, is better than knight d5 but i still don't think you need to worry that much you know you can play still play knight e4 i mean my knight's definitely doing better on f5 than it was on d5 because it's closer to your king but if you're worried about this move you can just play king h2 mm -hmm. yeah i just posi positionally i just like it mm -hmm. I just like it more this way. Yeah, for sure. I think your positional play is pretty on spot. Like your your intuition is correct. This knight is better on f5 for sure than it was on D, on d5. Yeah, but it's definitely true. Like it's I think here you can really see that like each of my moves was kind of and a small blunder ish mm -hmm. and it added up and like with each move it just got worse. Yeah, it get like compounds, right? That's the whole thing. Yeah. Um you're like, it's like limping, <laughs> kind of. You're just like gradually making mistakes and there's no way for you to like come back from it sort of thing. But yeah, I mean, what you said about Night 4 is 100% correct. That was actually, you know, you're pointing out one of my mistakes, which is really cool. Um, so, I mean, after that, your position is just like worse because my bishop is so good. I think d4, like there's so many, mo like, I don't know. I, I think also this was I really struggled with, like mm -hmm. maybe once but before. I think d4 is not a good move, it felt like. Yeah, uh, d4, also d4 was not a good move. Here I should have just taken, because this just gives me a bishop yeah. and outpost on d5. I just took it later. Yeah, it's also, it's also bad because I need to take with my queen. Like here? Because, right, if I take... Yeah, oh, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, you, you, well, I mean, you can't take with a knight because you lose the e-pawn. Exactly, yes. so... Mm -hmm. Just positionally, it just feels like you're much better than me. <laughs> or better. Yeah, I think positionally, I'm uh, a lot better in this position. Like, you're not mm -hmm. wrong. I have pair of bishops, I'm gonna take here, I'm gonna probably go castle. Um, this pawn is going to be weak forever because it's going to be isolate. Like if I take here, I'll show um, if I take this and you just take this is going to be a weak pawn forever. Right. I also have tactics here, so you actually can't play that. So you have to go queen a4 check and then here. But yeah, basically this position is just not very comfortable for you. Mm -hmm. So it's crazy how you already know your mistakes before I even have to tell you them. Like you just you're so self-aware. What? <laughs> it's crazy. I, I mean, I think I think one thing is finding the mistake. Obviously, a lot of the mistakes I can tell that I made. Like once I made them, a couple moves after, I see why they're bad. Mhm. Mm yeah, because so. the the reasons for why that move is bad shows up later, right? Because you exactly. did something. Yeah, for sure. Um. So after Queen D two, Rook A D eight, uh, Queen E three, Rook F E eight. Yeah, I mean. Rook F8, I, I mean, Rook A1 is probably like, it's really hard to make a decision here now too, because I'm actually threatening to take your bishop. Um, so maybe you could have dropped your queen back, but I mean, this position- I, I think Queen E3 is just really bad. Yeah, Queen E3 is not really the spot you want to put your queen. Uh, queens? I think Queen C1 or Bishop, yeah. Bishop E3 seems like- Bishop E3 would be good, but I have Bishop takes F3 right now. So that's not really good. Um, yeah. Yeah, um, queen c1. 
queen c1 yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah queen c1 to... would have been fine but then your rook is also really passive right and then i'll still put yeah. e5 <laughs> it's just a bad position it's just a bad position when you get in these positions that's because you made a few inaccurate moves you made literally like you literally just made a few inaccurate moves honestly you could have saved yourself here by playing d takes c5 and then i have less control of the center but yeah, because totally. because yeah because you let me because you have no pawns in the center i'm threatening to push e5 you just kind of gave me control of the center, right? And that just kind of went downhill. You already know the whole control the center spiel. So I don't even need to explain it to you. But yeah, it's just in this position specifically, you got to keep that in mind. Uh -huh. But I would say the opening you play with d4 is really fits your style, in my opinion. Like you're, you played that one really well. Yeah, it was. Uh, I think it's because d4 I played much more games than I played of this. Mm-hmm. I should probably against stronger opponents like you should I should probably stick to. Yeah, I think so too. I think against me, D4 is the way to go. I actually hate D4 openings because they're just not my style. Yeah, you seem you seem to do best in more more <laughs> open. Like less positional, more aggressive. Yeah. I mean I can. The thing is, I'm so used to playing bullet, it's just I like to run it down a lot. I mean I play Irelia, right? Like you know what that champion does. Yeah. You run at people. Like that's what you I do. Just you go after it. Yeah, I go after it. I'm very, very... Um, I don't have a very good play style, but it's fine. Is that, is that your personality? Does that reflect your personality? It does. <laughs> oh my god. This is like a two-hour debate about my personality. Like, my personality is... really bad. <laughs> yeah, I basically just yell a lot. Um, it's a bit scuffed. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> my chat knows. <laughs> I, uh, I like to, I basically just flame people all the time, so, yeah, it's pretty much my personality. I mean, ta having talked to you, and, like, no, but, like, the thing is, I know you play poker pretty aggressively, so it just hasn't really translated over to chess yet, I guess, I, for you. I think, I think, for me, it's really, um... What I realize when I talk to chess players, for mm -hmm. me, it's literally, my brain just works in value. It's like, I, I'm I like just that. thinking... <laughs> the most valuable thing i don't care if i sacrifice anything like i'm just yeah. thinking okay what, what's no the, that's the a good mentality to have because too many lower elo chess players think way too highly of material values it's, it's yeah i think that's, a, that's mm -hmm. an upside from it, from being a poker player and also because you play poker you have like very um like you you're a pro poker player you have uh what's it called like really good self-control i think you never just start like running it down you're always like more or less in control and that's kind of crazy yeah. only if i lose a couple hundred thousand then uh yeah then then we might start <laughs> seeing <that. laughs> you know if we put bets on chess i'm sure you would try even harder <laughs> yeah i don't know it's you don't need bets for me. I tried my hardest against you here today. Like, <laughs> okay, I, well, you know, I like, that's... The, I like the competition. Yeah, no, but like, I'm serious. Like, if we do, like, I'll take odds, obviously. Like, I'll do time odds or something. Actually, I don't even know if time odds... Yeah, time odds would probably be fair. Like, what, 10 minutes to 2 minutes or something like that? Yeah, so something like that would be... Um... That could be fun. It might be fun if you're interested in ever doing bets. I don't know, I just like... <laughs> Probably you not. Seem the, you seem the gambling type to me. I saw that when, when we were playing the $20 spin and goes. Um, <laughs> like, I could tell. Like, yeah, I just like gambling. I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, the way I play games. Like, I, I think that your pers personality definitely translates to games. So, I oh, definitely I, lo I love games. I'm a huge I love games. Wait, what other games do you play? Um, I don't play so many computer games anymore. Mm -hmm. Like, it's, it's kind of poker ruined me, you know? It's, yeah, yeah, I understand. With the moment I started playing full-time poker, I stopped playing other games. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I, I played, a, I like these mixed strategic, strategic games. So I really played, um, a lot of TFT or Hearthstone. I oh, like these a lot. Oh, I see. Okay. And, um, then I like the occasional just calm down game. So I, I used to play, you know, one league game after <laughs> or 
something and then <laughs> yes yeah, somebody else who uses leak to calm down everybody makes fun of me for playing leak to calm down but i'm like man i'm already tilted from chess <laughs> i play leak to calm down <laughs> see my chat doesn't understand this <laughs> what is what is interesting though is that i i i really don't know how you can tilt in chess really i mean if, like, I if you lose it. 10 games in a row do you not tilt uh, no, like I, I think the reason why I cannot really tilt in chess is like because everything is on the is on the is on there, right? Like if I make a bad move, I made a bad move. Like oh, was... I understand. There's no like luck. There's no teammates. It's only yourself. Yeah, yeah. it's just literally. I, I sit there. I have options. I make choices. And <laughs> in with poker, I feel it's much different because a there's a lot of money involved. True. So that's the first thing. And b. A lot of it is out of your hands. Yeah, for sure, it's RNG. Just so... like League of Legends, a lot of RNG. <laughs> <laughs> the most RNG okay, game okay. in the world. Fair, fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> so basically, it's just like chess is the game. Okay, I see. I... No, it's always interesting to talk to people from different like games because I I, ne I was never allowed to play video games. Um, the only game I I picked up League of Legends at seventeen, and that was like my first video game ever. So it's just like everything is still so new to me. It's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I'm down to do an odds match for sure. I, 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 I saw mean, you tweeted at uh, Daniel, I think, and he was like, oh, no. I was, just, I was actually just joking because um, he. I'm not sure if, uh, if he, people know in chess that uh, he's doing a big poker challenge right now. Oh? Yeah, so the poker challenge he's doing is 35,000 hands and... Oh! That's what I was referring to. I see. Okay, okay. Now I understand. And so I was just making a joke because uh, they had long, long back and forth, uh, between like negotiating their ah uh, negotiating their challenge. But okay, that's pretty cool. Yeah, he he's uh, he seems to be picking up chess pretty quickly. Like um, <laughs> I think poker players, poker and chess has a lot in common. Not so much in terms of like the game style, but just the way you think. It's really healthy. Yeah, it's 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 actually I think also for the studying to be honest. Like I can tell now, when I compare myself now to me like being ten, mm -hmm. I was just playing. Like I was okay, literally. Okay, but that's an, okay. But poker aside, you would have gotten better at studying. I would hope, <laughs> compared at age twenty six to age ten. <laughs> yeah, I think I think I was much more creative when I was ten. like. So I, I think from from a potential standpoint. Right now, it's much more about my diligence and mm -hmm. my my way of thinking rather than my raw talent. I, I think I was much more talented. For sure. Uh, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Than I, than I am now. I mean, you use the talent on poker, <laughs> which exactly. I, which is a lot I more valuable than using it on chess. So it's fine. Now I'm old, and <laughs> the only thing I can reach is maybe a, being an 1850 mediocre. Uh, no, I think you can get to 2,000 within the year at least. I think you're already like, if, if okay, so given time, right? Like, if you were able to play classical games, I would say, like just longer games, I think your rating would go up. But obviously, because I, you play a lot. I don't want to play too long games right now because I, I want to see many situations. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I don't want to get stuck too long in games. For sure. Um, But yeah, I, I want to kind of find a mix between like kind of testing or, or learning or improving my my thought processes and mm -hmm. and seeing lots of different variations of the game and and studying it yeah no definitely i i agree with the way that you're approaching it because too many people get caught up on pure elo and that's not a healthy way because improvement isn't always rating right like yeah that that's what i suggest in in poker actually all the time is that um, in the beginning, like it doesn't really matter if you compare the leverage. I was dabbling quite a bit on low stakes and just trying to improve as much. And mm -hmm. then the, the real money is when, when you know, you play high stakes. Like yeah. that's, that's when it makes a big difference. So me losing a couple hundred bucks in the beginning and investing in my in my skill was totally worth it if I compare to. That's what I'm gonna say when I lose money in poker. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's it's all an investment, you know. It's an investment in your ability to make millions with it. Exactly. Okay, well, I mean, I don't think I have the potential to make millions in poker, but like, you know, we'll we'll work on it slowly, slowly. <laughs> maybe maybe a thousand. 
Maybe a thousand. Well, I already won like a thousand, so. Oh, uh, maybe five. There we go. Five thousand. That's the next goal. Pretty good goal. Okay. Memo, thank you. So is that actually is that actually your name? Yeah. Well, okay. So. Nemo is a name I've been going by since I was three. I don't actually like getting called by my real name, so this is what everybody, every single person calls me. Um, okay. But yeah, you, no, just call me Nemo. My my Mandarin, my Chinese name is ch like Chi Yu, but yeah, Nemo is Chi Yu, like Chi Yu. Chi Yu. Close enough. Yeah. How do I Close pronounce enough. your name, by the way? Uh, Fedor. Fedor. Okay, Fedor. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, okay. well, thank you so much for today. Hope you have fun. I definitely learned oh, so it much. Was, it was really awesome. Yeah, and if you ever have more time, just let me know, and I'll love to show you more chess as well. Yeah, for sure. Let's do it again when I'm a bit higher rated and played a bit more, and then I try my try my luck again. Yeah, I will I will go learn the poker hands and set it on exactly. four we, colors. We, we, <laughs> exactly. We can do some... Uh, some check in you know we can see like where's my poker journey at uh, my my chess journey at uh, and your poker yeah, journey exactly. at. i mean to be fair i already beat you in poker so you need to beat me in chess next you actually did beat me you won <laughs> two dollars off me that uh I, that are forever I, should, I should just quit i should just quit poker now and be like yeah <laughs> i'm done yeah. <laughs> you, now you know your twitter status for today. Yeah, yeah this is i'm gonna tweet that i'm actually gonna clip it and tweet it <laughs> be fedora holds in, in poker time to uh retire yeah you you two owed me Keep yeah me exactly in chess, in poker. yep yeah you want to play league as well and then <laughs> yeah what we one league no, I have no chance here. I, I saw you. You're too too advanced. Wait, wait. What what what's your rank in league? I don't know actually. Oh. Like maybe okay. gold. Okay, so we're the same rank. And you're also EUS, I, so I, you're I probably like, higher. I play like games a month or so. So. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you don't. You barely play. I play way too much league. But yeah, I think I'm gonna start drifting more into poker. <laughs> Go for it. Yes, it'll be fun. All right. Thank you so much for today. Have a great night. I know it's like getting late there. Thanks a lot, and uh, was nice to meet you. And yeah. thanks for the coaching. And goodbye, chat. <laughs> All right, it was fun. Yeah, take care. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Azazi <laughs> sent me a meme. Azazi, stop sending me memes when I'm working. Can you stop sending me memes when I'm literally streaming? I look at the other monitor, and I'm I'm just like, what the fuck, bro? <laughs> Yo, it was actually a great lesson.